right, this meeting is being recorded of me and Alex Boland here, and we are going to be talking about intermediary. Alex had a very specific question about intermediary, and I remember when I was in um, the real estate school learning all this stuff about intermediary, the way the teachers explained it to me was so confusing, and it's not until I did one that I truly kind of understood it, so I, I've got, I think, I think, I've got a better way of teaching this than all those guys. I mean, because that question must come up a thousand times and they never answered it satisfactory to anybody's liking. So we're going to try it today. So before I try to explain it, Alex, ask your question. From the beginning, right. like you just did, because it was a great question. So, the, all right, we'll, we'll see. Now the pressure's on. So uh, <laughs> I've got a listing and uh, the client, it's a mobile home. I'm her listing agent. And I just get a call out of the blue from someone who, sounds like and says and claims they're a savvy investor. I buy well homes, I buy houses all the time to keep as rentals. Can you represent me also? He just came out and asked me right away. So I said, okay, well, you know, I need to check with my broker. I've never done that before. So uh, I checked back and, uh, you know, got the answer back. So what my question is, this guy sounds like he knows what he's doing. You know, he claims he's got an attorney, all this stuff. So, um, and it, you know, Eric responded back, well, need to find another agent. What, you want us to need to find another yeah. agent to help out with, with, with the white line or get this guy to sign off and say he's representing himself and, you know, um, say, no, I'm fine. I don't need any help. I'm going to represent myself. You represent the other side. I'll handle it on my own. So going right. forward, moving forward with this, I don't know what forms I need to give him or how to even go about doing it. I've never done one of these. So let's, I'm going to define, because you said something I thought was very important in that, that you may not have caught or even thought was that important. So let's start at the beginning of what is intermediary because this question does come up a lot and I'm probably gonna screw around and be a little distracted because um, I'm gonna look up the Trek intermediary form since this is kind of a live question and answer thing. Um, so here's the thing, intermediary. So first thing we have to realize about being a real estate agent, not a broker, an agent in Texas, is that you do not work with any clients, technically. It is not your client, Alex. It's, not, it's never your client, okay? It's Eric's client, all right? That's just the way it works. The broker owns every single, what they call um, uh, um, agency. So they, they, they own every single relationship not you. Even if you went out, found the person, it's your grandmother, she called you directly, doesn't matter. The broker owns that contract, the right to, or the exclusive right to sell or whatever it might be, okay? So whatever agency you have, period, it is the brokers. So what intermediary is, is if you have the buyer and the seller, so let's say you're selling it, I'm buying it, Eric is both our brokers, that means Eric has the sell side, and Eric has the buy side because technically you and I don't exist. We're just extensions of Eric. So with all of that being said, we have to act as a fiduciary to our client. We have to act in the best interest of our client. So if you're selling the property, Alex, your job is hopefully, I mean, just typically your job is to make that client the most money possible. Okay. Mm -hmm. On the buyer side, I'm trying to buy that house for the least amount of money as possible, especially since this was an investor deal, right? I'm trying to get the lowest number I can. You can't serve two masters in that instance, okay? I know technically they will work out and find a thing, but the chances of you either lying or fibbing or, or acting unethically in the middle of this just to get the deal closed might actually become the problem if that makes any sense. So that's when you have to incorporate intermediary. And we do intermediary by assignment here. So if you are trying to work both sides of the, the transaction, you cannot. You have to assign an agent on one side, you have to sign an agent on another, and you have to disclose that on the intermediary form, which I can't find and I'm not gonna sit here and do that. You have to make sure that both parties understand, hey, look, we both work for the same broker and I'm doing one side or the other. Okay, right. um, so it, it's really important. No, you cannot represent both sides. Now, your question is pretty specific, and I like that because your question says, hey, he sounds really savvy. 
he can represent himself, he can do all that kind of stuff. In Texas, you do not need representation, okay? You can buy the house on your own. Now, he, you, what you said in there, which I don't know how true it is, he said he had a lawyer, right? okay? If he's got a lawyer, that's fine as well, okay? And because a lawyer technically is considered a broker in Texas, okay? They have all the training, knowledge, and everything they need to be a broker. Now, they're technically not a broker, but they're the equivalent in the state of Texas. So what you can say, oh, I'm glad you have a lawyer. I have, um, I have, uh, I'm going to represent my client. Your, your lawyer represents you now. And we leave it at that. Okay. And now the, the funny thing is, is if you signed an exclusive right to sell on that exclusive right to sell, you did say that you're offering, you're going to be taking 6% as a selling agent. And when you list it in the MLS, you tell the buying agent, they're going to buy, you're going to give them 3%, right? Right. So technically you're entitled to the full 6% unless the lawyer says they want it. Okay. Now, with all of that being said, I still would not want to draft the contract for that other guy. Because you're taking his, I mean, you're taking the information. I'd say, have your lawyer draft the contract. I'm happy to present it. If that, does that make any sense? Yeah, it does. So you would just have an attorney draft and not use the promulgated forms and just go with. Well, the promulgated forms are promulgated beyond agents. It is promulgated to the public. Promulgated just means spread, just yeah. handed out. Okay. That's all promulgated. It's a fancy word for here it is. This is use it. That's all it means. So you can go online right now as a straight civilian, for lack of a better term, and go download a one to four family contract. You can do that. Right. It's not hard. Just fill it all and say, hey, look, I need you to fill it out. Fill it out to the best of your ability. <laughs> right. Send it over to us. Sign it and send it to us. And then at that point, you can counter. And fill it out correctly because he's going to screw something up. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. And say, thank you so much for your offer. Here's our counter. And then you just fix all those little loopholes. Please have your lawyer review. Uh, okay. And then one of the things I would really put on that contract is, you know, towards the bottom of it, whatever it is, page seven, it has the representation of lawyers. I yeah, say, yeah. I need your lawyer's information to put in here because I need, I need this paperwork all to say I am represented and I have a lawyer. Right. Now, if he chooses to use that lawyer or not, that's up to him. And you don't have to have an agent. You absolutely don't. And you, you can negotiate that 3% into it. You know what I mean? I, I mean, whatever you want to do. But to answer the question, no, you cannot represent both sides of the party. Now, okay. what I typically do in a situation like that is I'll find another white line agent and say, hey, look, man, uh, can I pay you 2%? <laughs> I'll keep the other four because I brought you this whole deal and put it on the silver platter for you. Right. Uh, let me get 1% for that. And then I go fill out the intermediary form and we're done from there. So, so um, but I just make sure it's intermediary with assignment, make sure Eric knows. And then a very important thing, like just an ethics thing beyond that is you cannot discuss this like personally. So you and I can't go have a beer and start talking about this deal. Like we really, we can go have a beer, but we got to talk about anything but these clients in order to consider it ethical. Like, and I would make sure that any communication about those two clients inside of an intermediary is all tracked through email or some other way to track it. I'd probably do email personally because I save, I archive everything in my white line email because I just don't want there to ever be a question that I did anything ethically incorrect. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, I've watched a lot sense? of lawyer shows. I know that, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's all about CYA. The, the, I, I say this a lot and I tell everybody this a lot that the lawyer, the, the Trek does not care about agents or brokers. They do not care. They don't, they are not here to help us. I mean, they're here to help, sure, but they're not here to protect us. They do not work for us. They work for the general public. So if anybody from the public comes in and says, I think he was doing something fishy, they've got, now Trek is going to 100% back them and go, what did Alex do? Hold on a minute. I'm going to call him. Right. I want to see your emails. I want to see your paperwork. I want to see everything to find out if you were being fishy. Right. They don't, they're not going to defend you. Now, before you do something stupid, they'll help you. Right. <laughs> An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Right. Hold on a second. Yeah. Sorry. I'm plugging my computer on accident. It's dying quickly. Um, so, I mean, you can call them ahead of time and go, hey, what's going on with this deal? And they'll tell you. But once, once you get a complaint or once somebody says something about you, you're dead in the water, man. So you, now you're playing defense, like hardcore defense. 
I believe so, it. So yeah, did that make sense what I was saying about intermediaries? Yeah, it does. Yeah, you see, that's the thing. I mean, I got that, but you, you tend to forget, oh, this is my client, but it is all, you know, it goes back to the broker. They're actually uh, got the client. So yeah, uh, it's, it's hard to, for, I mean, it's hard to remember that sometimes like, yeah, I'm doing all this work, I'm this and that, but yeah, that makes sense. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. And, and then ultimately, I mean, yes, you can use lose your license and all that, but it all does fall back on Eric, right? So yeah. if it turns out you were doing something unethical, now they're coming after Eric. They're coming after you. They're probably fining everybody, suspension of licenses. God only knows. You know, it's like, well, you're going to have to go back to your uh, agency <laughs> class and take that again because you apparently didn't get it. You know, they, they, it, you just want to be very, very careful. And so with intermediary, be careful. Like, yeah. I, I always get somebody else, always get somebody else on the other line. Um, and we've had a lot of cool people that are around that are, that are easy to help. I like it. Normally what I do is I try to find the newer agents that I know can dedicate the time. Like if yeah. I called Eric and said, Hey, we run intermediary on this for me. He'd be like, hell no, I'm busy. <laughs> you know? yeah. So, um, and actually Eric could not run intermediary because he can't technically that would put him on both sides. But my, my point is, is don't find somebody who's like slam busy, you know, find somebody that could, that could use the lesson and work alongside with you or, you know, call me, I can do intermediary. <laughs> yeah. Yo, so, no, I get that. Yeah. It was just one but, of those things where I've never, so I am a newer agent, you know, I've been investing a long time, but this is new to me. This is the first time it happened, but the guy just came out so aggressive about it. Hey, I'm not a representative. Can you represent me? I was like, okay, slow down. Yeah, maybe let me check. And see that right there. I mean, I'm saying what I've said, and I'm not trying to throw this guy to the bus. I don't know his name. I don't know who he is. Yeah. All I'm saying is maybe he's doing it. So somewhere down the line, he can bitch and moan about something that went wrong. You know, if he's so smart and so in this, I'm like, why are you putting me into a precarious position Yeah. where I could get in trouble? Are you trying to, never mind, I don't want the deal and it's all his fault because he wasn't acting as my fiduciary. You know, right. it's like, whoa, 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 you know? So I, yeah. I that's, I, I'm, I'm like, the, the more training I do and the more questions I see and the more, because I am one of the owners of white line. And if there is a problem with track, it comes across my desk and we see it. It's like, good Lord. And it, it's always just this tiny little thing. It's, it will, they said this and I'm like, well, it's not incorrect. It's like, but did, did we write it down? Did you send them an email that said that, you know? So that's what track's going to want to see. I want to yeah. see every line of communication and every, everything. So yeah, CYA, right? Hold on. There was, hold on. This might, um, hold on a second. I found this great little tool online one time that I use, and I can't remember what it's called now. And it was free. Free is good. Is it this one? Amateur? No, it says it's going to charge you for this one. But what it does is it scans your emails. Like if you send an email and you have a subject line as the address, uh, the address is the subject line, yep. it'll automatically put all that stuff in folders for you. Oh, really? Like, cool. All the way down. Yeah. So uh, maybe this is it because it does it some of it for free. But if you want to upgrade, it's 19 bucks a month. But it's called... Uh, here, I'll show you real quick. I, I know that there's a, wait, 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 wait. sorry. I'm going to share my screen. Come in. Okay, so it, it's this, web, can you see this website here? Amateur? Yeah. This is one of them. I'm not, I'm not even sure this is the one I'm using. Uh, um, but I, you just get it to where it, yeah, your folio, your magical email assistant. Uh, unless you're super OCD, like my wife, my wife is super OCD and like every email she gets, she puts into other folders and all that, but no, she works I'm actually the complete a big opposite. company. I'm the laziest person in the world when it comes to, like, I want everything nice and neat and packaged, but I'm not the one who wants to do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but she, she works for a really big company and they, there's a lot of, uh, gotchas. Is it prospect plus? I forget. This sounds something familiar. <coughs> no, no, that doesn't seem right. Um, but I don't know. Gee, you can find something like that. I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of it, but maybe I could figure it out. Hold on. 
but yeah, there's my story on intermediary. Any other fun intermediary questions? Just do it. Do it with assignment. Be thankful that we do. A lot of brokerages won't even let you do intermediary because it can get hairy. But like I said, if you don't know, don't assume. Thank you for asking, Alex. Thank you for calling Eric. You know what I mean? It's yeah, well, just, there's too many ways for that to screw up. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it is folio. See, it, just, it automatically does that for me. Even Zala, Sherry, whatever. Aaron Bevins, he's a wholesaler. Apparently, I picked up on him. You know what I mean? It's like, but it pulls yeah. all these addresses. Okay, yeah. What that is. And it just saves it in there for me. But yeah, that, so I guess it is folio. Folio by amateur. I guess I am doing the free version of it. Oh, that's cool. They have a free yeah, version. Sounds familiar. Yeah, I don't like if you look at it, it doesn't do everything. 2.5 business emails organized. But, you know, if that you do like pro, you get so much more. Yeah. Just not a bad idea, guys. It's just not a bad idea to save every email that your client sends you. Um, I don't know what the statute of limitations is, but it, typically they're four years for just about everything. Um, see, this is something on a foreclosure list that apparently I was emailing about, but it was like, yep, keeping it. <laughs> so, yeah, um, Gmail's good about keeping that stuff. I remember when I was doing RMLO yeah, things, They the RMLO stuff was uh, three years you had to keep all their files. Yeah, Whatever typically was... statute is four years. I think it's oh. the longest statute of limitations you can have on anything that's a, a business-related thing. There's, you know, you can murder somebody and still be on the hook. But, uh, but like anything business-related, tax returns, like all that kind of stuff, money, I think it's typically four years. But don't quote me, not a lawyer. <laughs> This is not intended for legal advice. So, all right. Well, that was an easy one. Is there anything you'd like to see on trainings coming forward, Alex? I, you know, I don't know. I have nothing specific off the top of my mind right now. Um, I, I don't know. I really don't. I'm, I'm a terrible help with this. No, I'm sorry. Just curious. There, yeah, I'm mean, just curious. After we hang up, I'll think of ten things. But uh, right now, I don't. I don't know. What What have we not? What have we not covered know. in a while? Is there something we need a refresher on? Maybe something that's come up. I mean, you're saying you see all these trek issues. Well, with I'm, I'm curious. Like I've got, yeah, I've got some ideas of things that I want to do trainings on. But I'm always curious as to what people tend to. You know what I mean? It's like, well, I can sit here and tell you all the wonderful things that. Well, you know. So for I think I for know. me, but being new to the agent side uh it's a lot of the paperwork nonsense um zip forms you know that's a great little tool it's free you know finding the stuff on there it's just um it's tedious for me because i'm not used to it i've seen some agents they blow through there and they they have like everything is memorized um you know in their head because they've just that motion that i haven't done a lot so i don't know i mean if that's helpful for anyone else um maybe some of the well my my little tidbit on that would be, um, sorry, I'm going to share my screen again. My little tidbit on that is, uh, is go to uh, your agents page. Uh, why has my computer been running so slow? I need to get a new computer. This thing has been a good little computer for a long time. Do, do, do. Come on. But the best way for me to keep this straight, Alex, which is a simple answer, and I do have some videos on it, but. Oh, good God, my internet sucks. Kids are probably watching a movie or something. Getting work done during the summer with kids is hard. <laughs> Do you get that Google Fiber? They, they just, no, so I'm the president of my HOA, and they've been digging through it and tearing up our neighborhood, and everybody's losing their mind. Um, yeah, that's happening in my neighborhood too. Uh, but it should, it should be here in the next couple of weeks. Which, oh, good God, I can't wait. But then, and then, what the problem is going to be is I'm going to have the right router, and I got It's going to end up costing me four hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. The big um, thing is now. So go to resources. in my neighborhood. They've got. I mean, they've got the flags. They've got the paint. Uh, everything. And yeah, they're coming in there, and they're cutting. They're still breaking all the lines, cutting through all the stuff. I'm like, guys, it's marked. W what are you doing here? So everyone's getting all oh. bent out of shape. Well, I mean, I, I live in, I'd say half my community's younger families and half my community's 60 or older. 
and oh my god i had this one guy call me and he was yelling at me because they dug up his yard and he was doing all this stuff and and then he told me he's like i just don't understand why everybody can't just go to google.com like i do <laughs> that's when i realized where the disconnect was i was like oh well yeah. let me explain something instead of having <laughs> say uh <laughs> morris code lines running through here we've decided to add telephone lines it's a different kind of line yeah um anyway so uh go to your important docs uh, through white line, right? So you're going to go to white line resources. You're going to click on important docs and then go see the docs here. Once you get in here, this is what I do. So if I've got a listing, I have one of these printed out for every single one of my listings. Um, it just keeps me straight, but it also gives me the numbers so I can find things very quickly. Um, once you kind of work your way through a couple of transactions. Oh my God, my computer's running slow. This is murder, but it, over here, it'll, there we go. So the residential listing agreement, right? Registration between broker and owner, intermediary relationship. If I need that, I know exactly what the number is. Oh, so when I get into zip form, yeah. does that make sense? That was and this is the actual that, name. I was looking for that intermediary trick earlier today and I couldn't find it. Yeah, so you should be able to do all that. So then I got the name and then I'll write their phone number, the buyer's agent's phone number over here in case I get something that needs to be filled out. But as you can see, it's taking forever to load, but yeah, that's what, uh, that's pretty helpful and I enjoy it. So that's what I do because I hate paperwork too. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Amen. You know what I hate even more? Losing my license or getting fine. <laughs> <laughs> That I will avoid at all costs. So, all right, man. Well, 